Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer, the channel where we cut through the marketing BS, take a look at new and old gaming technologies, to figure out what makes the most sense for you. Alrighty guys, so over the past couple of weeks, NVIDIA's really been pushing their narrative that ray tracing is going to be the future. We've talked about this many times and in my last video, I decided to see if ray tracing really is that big of a deal for you guys. So in that video, basically I did a side-by-side -side blind test and 4,500 of you guys responded to that. So we're gonna kick this video off by going over the results. Starting off, option two was the ray traced image. So taking a look at the results here, we can see that right off the bat, 13% of you guys just straight up got it wrong. You thought option one had ray tracing and well, it didn't. Uh, we had 17% of you guys going ahead and not seeing any difference at all. So that's 30% just right off the jump, simply couldn't tell or thought the non-ray traced image was the ray traced image. So 17% of you guys did see the image very quick, clearly. That was option two, very easy for you guys to see which one was ray traced and which one was not. And then 52%, the overwhelming majority, you guys did see the difference, you did get it right, but you said it was very difficult to see. So with 82% of you guys either not saying it's a big deal and it was difficult to see, or simply not seeing the difference between ray tracing on and off at all, what that tells me is that it's not that big of a deal. It's not a big feature that everybody really needs, and it's, it's just not. However, today what we're gonna be talking about is what I think is the biggest deal of the RTX lineup, and that is DLSS. And in particular, the reason why I think it's a big deal is mostly for the mid-range and mainstream graphics card segment. So the two to $400 GPU buyer out there, which is the majority of you guys and the majority of gamers at large. But before we get into it, if you like these kind of videos, please smash that like button, please subscribe, please share this video with your friends. YouTube really isn't a big fan of promoting smaller creators anymore. So the only way that this channel is gonna grow is with your support. And we've done very well this month. So I wanna thank each and every one of you guys. We're doing really good and doing videos like this are a lot of fun and I really appreciate that. So if you like this stuff, smash that like button and comment in the comment section below because I love to hear your thoughts on these type of things. All right, so what I decided to do was over the Black Friday stuff last month, I wanted to put together the absolute cheapest gaming PC possible. So lowest price point and maximum performance. So to do this, I went ahead and picked up an Intel Core i3-10100. This was on sale for $99, so a sub $100 CPU. This comes in with four cores, eight threads, uh, 3.6 gigahertz base and 4.3 gigahertz boost clock. I paired this up with a cheap H410 motherboard for $69. That really wasn't that great of a deal, but most motherboards were actually sold out, surprisingly enough. So I had to pay basically regular price on that. I picked up the Team Vulcan Z3200 16 gig kit that I recommended in my Black Friday shopping guide, as well as the Gigabyte 650 watt 80 plus bronze power supply, also recommended in that video. Now I paired these with the least expensive RTX card ever produced up until this point, and that is the RTX 2060. Now you guys have probably heard me mention that I picked up this card, and the reason why I wanted to do it is because this is like literally the bare minimum. This is the weakest RTX card or DLSS capable graphics card out on the market right now. So we have basically the cheapest CPU, cheapest platform, cheapest GPU capable of doing this. And I wanted to see if this machine could do 4K gaming with DLSS. And the results are pretty good. All right, so before we get into the benchmarks, just wanna go over this again. I did this in my RX 580 video, but all games I'm using the preset turned up anisotropic filtering to 16x on all games and motion blur is always disabled. So those are just on every game, that's the case. Uh, I chose not to list it on each one this time around. If there are any other changes, I might talk about them, but in the little black section, you will see any of the adjustments there. I also went ahead and used DLSS performance mode, which means the internal resolution is 1080p with the output being 4K. 
So, all right, let's go ahead and check out these benchmarks. Kicking things off with Call of Duty Cold War, we can see that we're getting an average of 68 FPS with a 1% low of 47. In this title, the average of 60 is typically gonna be your target, and being above 45 on the 1% low means with VRR, so G-Sync, or well in this case G-Sync, or FreeSync on the AMD side, means you're gonna get a buttery smooth experience out of this game. So, yep, Call of Duty Cold War, definitely playable at 4K on this ultra budget PC. Next up, moving on over to Control, we can see we have an average of 74 FPS, with a 1% low of 59 FPS, which is very, very good because our 1% low is basically 60 FPS. So this is running extremely well here. Next up, jumping on over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This one, I can't pick the DLSS mode. There's no like performance mode. It's just basically on or off. And in this one, we're getting an average of 51 FPS and a 1% low of 41 FPS. So my guess is on this DLSS is probably running closer to 1440p instead of 1080p and that's why we're getting a lower level of performance than on the other games so this might be a game where you would need to go to like 1800p and then dlss might kick it up to that nice 60 fps mark once again with vrr this is still a very enjoyable experience but i wouldn't say it's as ideal as it could be next up we have watchdog legions and on this one, we're back up to an average of 64 FPS with a 1% low of 44 FPS. So just shy of that 45 on the 1% low. But once again, I mean, that's close enough. This is an absolutely fantastic experience. Now, this is the reason why this video is coming out now instead of me doing it about a month ago. But that's because we wanted to see how Cyberpunk would perform. So Cyberpunk 2077 on medium with high textures, there's high textures on every one of these benchmarks, we end up getting an average FPS of 52 and a 1% low of 35. To me, that 35 was a little bit too low, so I decided let's try Cyberpunk on low settings, still high textures, and on this one, we have an average of 56, so not a huge jump there, but the 1% low jumps up to 45 FPS. So to me, this is a better experience than running it on medium. And if you use like Digital Foundry's optimized settings, you typically get around the medium preset level of performance. So on this one, to get 4K going on the 2060, you probably want to do low with high textures, but honestly, the visual quality to me is pretty darn good. You're actually looking at that footage right now. This is actually low settings with high textures. And to me, it actually looks cleaner because there's less post-processing, but that's just me. Now I decided to do one more benchmark just to see like on games like Cyberpunk that are pretty demanding and difficult to get running at high frame rate. What if we ran it at uh, 1080p? We use DLSS on quality mode, which means internal at 720p and then running at 1080p. And honestly, I think that's the best way to run the game for me, but that's because I like that better responsiveness of the high FPS. So 1080p, I use the medium quality settings, like I said, kind of the same level of performance as the optimized settings uh, from Digital Foundry. DLSS set to quality, we're getting an average frame rate of 84 FPS with a 1% low of 52. And during much of the scene, believe it or not, we're actually well over 100 FPS. So that means high frame rate gaming is possible on the RTX 2060 at 1080p with pretty solid quality settings. So if you guys have been watching the channel, you guys know that I'm a big fan of the AI upscaling. NVIDIA's version is called DLSS. AMD has a version in the works. And Microsoft actually has one as well. But I've been harping on this technology for a while because this is literally, to me, this is the key for mainstream and mid-range gamers to get 4K gaming anytime in the near future. Right now, if you actually want a native 4K capable graphics card, well, in Cyberpunk, I don't think anything can really do it. Maybe the 3090 with some compromised settings. Uh, so you basically, you're talking about a $1,500 graphics card to be able to do that. Or you can get a two or $300 graphics card and use something like DLSS. That to me is a huge deal because you can essentially get the same quality settings as a much more expensive graphics card with some tweaks and some minor compromises like DLSS. 
And to me, this is really revolutionary. This is going to make high-end graphics cards more and more niche as mainstream graphics cards are going to become more and more capable here in the future. So once the 2060 gets replaced by the 3060, perhaps Shadow of the Tomb Raider will hit that 60 FPS mark. And that's the reason why I was really hard on AMD for not having this level of technology out there. Yes, native resolution gaming is one thing, and that's great. It's wonderful for people that want to spend five, six, seven, eight hundred, thousand, fifteen hundred dollars on a graphics card. But for the vast majority of gamers that don't want to do that and they're pretty happy with the two to three hundred dollar range most of the time, this is the real game changer. And I don't think Nvidia really wants that. A lot of people are like, why would Nvidia put out this technology? Well, they had to to get ray tracing working. I mean, as we can see, a 3090 even with DLSS really can't run cyberpunk uh, at 4K with ray tracing. It's just not possible. So they needed that technology to make ray tracing work. However, you turn the ray tracing off, as most of you guys either can't tell the difference or it doesn't make that big of a difference to you at all anyway, 82%, it's not a big deal to. You just turn that off and then poof, your two, $300 graphics card is now a 4K gaming card. That is the big deal. And I know a lot of people have talked about this before, but I really want to hammer this home and put it in that light. Not a lot of people look at it from the perspective of the two to $300 graphics card user. Most reviewers out there are busy using $700 or $1,500 graphics cards. There's no longer going to be a need for the vast majority of people uh, for those graphics cards once AI upscaling becomes the standard and is literally in every single game. Now, today it's still kind of a big deal because three of this holiday's biggest titles, that'd be Watch Dog Legions, Call of Duty, Cold War, and Cyberpunk, three of the biggest titles already support it this holiday. Next holiday season, is that, are there going to be more? I would assume so, because there's literally no reason for developers not to put this technology into their games because of how much of a performance boost that offers their average consumer. And that means the average person is gonna have a significantly better experience when they have the option to do this. Now, some of you guys are gonna be going, well, the quality difference, I can see the difference between DLSS on and off. Okay, I really can't, especially on my LG OLED, which does great upscaling and a bunch of other cool stuff. There's a reason why it costs 1500 bucks, has great processing. We talked about it in yesterday's live stream. If you guys wanna check that out, I'll have a link to the Patreon link down below so you guys can get to it. In my opinion, the average person's gonna be like, well, I could spend two or 300 bucks here and save like six or 700. I'm not buying that $800,000 graphics card. I think it's worth that minor image quality hit. It's the same thing with things like variable rate shading. It degrades the quality of the image to gain performance. That is another feature kinda similar to this where quality might go down a smidge, but then performance goes up. In a lot of cases, DLSS, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference nowadays. And as the technology matures, it's gonna get even better and it's gonna become even harder to tell the difference between on and off. And once we get to that point, and in some games we already are, but I think most people out there are gonna just say, well, screw it, I'm gonna save five or $600 and go on the lower end, turn ray tracing off because that's a feature that doesn't really matter yet. Maybe in the future it will, but today it doesn't. And yeah, you guys can get away with much cheaper components. That's why I paired this with a very inexpensive CPU, a sub $100 CPU. Now, obviously it was on sale at $99, but the 10100F, which means the GPU's kind of fused off, that's normally like 105, like on an everyday sort of price scheme. So, I mean, you can get a CPU at that price point and GPU at the two or $300 range, you're talking a very, very budget-friendly system. I do recommend the very expensive OLED to go with it because then you get superior image quality than even having a higher-end system. But the point is, the cost of building a pure gaming system, like my machine, I don't know if you can see it, there's a white PC behind me. Uh, that's the PC that I built. It lives in my living room and all it does is game. That's it, it's its only function. It plays video games when I wanna play in my living room. And that's why I wanted the cheapest possible thing because it's got this very niche function and I did not want to spend a lot of money on that. And honestly, we're talking about like, I think the total build cost is like 600 bucks. That's pretty freaking reasonable. And considering it can run any of today's modern games at 4K with DLSS or just crush it at 1080p on any other game. But the point is, is we can see where the future is going. 
<laughs> ray tracing's not it. It's just higher performance on lower end graphics cards. And I'm excited for that. I'm really excited to see AMD's response to this. This is a technology that they absolutely must have and they must have it as quickly as possible because if the majority of next year's major titles support DLSS, I'm gonna just have to say you guys have to buy Nvidia at that point. Even with all the stupid shenanigans that they're trying to push and the fact that they think ray tracing's the big deal, they want you putting ray tracing on so you hurt your performance so you spend more money on graphics cards. Turn the ray tracing off. Like I said, the majority of you can't really tell the difference anyway. Save your performance and then throw DLSS on and you can get high refresh gaming on Cyberpunk 2077. So the most demanding games out there, you can do that or you can go to higher resolutions like 4K. So I'm excited to see where this all goes. Like I said, Microsoft, AMD, and NVIDIA all working on this technology. And once it becomes a standard and we have it in all games, I think the mid-range is really going to be taking off and seeing performance and quality that they just haven't in a very long time. But already, guys, I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on the situation. Do you buy graphics cards in that range, the two, three, maybe $400 range, sub $400 graphics cards. So basically what used to be the 70 class on down. Nowadays, that's 70 class is $500. But back in the day, basically that sub $400 graphics cards, are you in that market? Do you think that this is going to be helpful? Do you want to game at 4K? Are you interested in upgrading your displays to something like an LG OLED, but you want a graphics card capable enough to do that? Uh, to me, this is the easiest path to get there. And honestly, like I said before, to me, this technology paired with things like APUs and really low power, maybe like laptop uh, GPUs will allow high, high definition, high resolution gaming. That's just not possible otherwise. But I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on this whole situation. If you like videos like this, please smash that like button. Please subscribe. Please share this around. Uh, I think that this is an interesting conversation the community really needs to have as I do see the mainstream gamers probably splitting off as the more elitist enthusiasts will continue to spend more and more money, the, the market's gonna kind of fracture off into two separate groups. Those that want maximum performance at minimum price and those that just want maximum performance and maximum quality regardless of price. And I think that that's really where the divide is starting to come in and why it's more difficult for reviewers and tech channels to kind of relate to everybody because the needs and wants of both communities seem to be differing so much. I'm firmly on the side of the mainstream gamer, like I said, two to $300 GPU buyer, people that are out there waiting for RTX 3060s and uh, RX 6600 XTs. I'm excited for those. The uh, RTX 3060 is probably the most anticipated Ampere card for me, especially the 12 gigabyte version. I think that's gonna be super interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm really interested to hear where you guys are at on the whole situation. And do you, do you see that divide starting to form as well? Where, you know, people are like, oh, thousand bucks, 1500 bucks. It's totally worth it to me. And you're like, that makes no sense to me personally. I only want to spend two or 300 bucks, but I want similar visuals to what those guys get. It doesn't have to be quite as good, but I don't want to be too far behind. So I think that this is going to be an interesting conversation topic out there for the community. So, alrighty guys, that's really all I have for you here today, and I will catch you guys in the next video.